Okay, we should be finishing the DLC today. I have a little bit of cleanup to do on the world map, so I'm not jumping directly into a difficult final boss. Uh, should be pretty easy, I assume, since I was intended to do it a while ago. Uh, am I going to be okay with my current blessing count? I do feel like my blessings made some of the bosses too easy. Uh, 16 blessing, which just went in in one shot, Midra, and then Mesmer kind of just also fell over without too much trouble. So I would like to have a little bit of challenge with the final boss, but I also don't want to be fighting it for five and a half hours, and it seems like getting to the Goldilocks zone is actually quite hard <laughs> to, to get the balance right on. He said one of these is near the entrance of the place. I have no idea where that is. Um, did. We came out and we saw a cross essentially immediately, right? Going well. Message from Leda. Maybe I needed to get this. We didn't pass on a message. The ceiling trees and the ancient ruins are all. Lies beyond the high bridge leading from the first floor of the storehouse. I'll join you there once I finish the task at hand. Maybe I needed to find that. I guess there's supposed to be a mausoleum off to the left somewhere here. See if I can find it. I'll just insta nuke whatever this ends up being, but that's fine. And then there's another one is by the waterfall in the Recluse River where I fought the hippos. Okay. sure if this is meant to be in the water. It might be one of those buildings over there. Don't think I get map markers for this stuff. Until I actually find the thing. It could be in the ailing village, maybe? Final boss is hard even at max blessings. Okay. I might try it with my weapon just to, because I have so much muscle memory for it now. Even if it resists wholly. Uh, but I do have a couple weapons I can swap to. I'm probably going to go ahead and upgrade the frost or poison. I guess, is the boss immune to either frost or poison? I should know. I never found this. No kidding. found the town, but... Okay. Do the, the perfume, then. Good morning. A bunch of Jeff Goldblums here. Want oh, some of their spirit ash. Thing, the bug people. Uh, I might need more specific directions to this mausoleum. It's supposed to be near, isn't the gravesite plains near the starting location? It must already be too far from it, I assume. Scarford didn't left me notes about this last night, so.
So that was near it, but never actually went inside. Yeah, so just a lootable item here. It could be in the water. Wait, did I do this? Yes, I did. Jail. Hey, message appraised. Save those for the boss fight, folks. Yeah, where is it? More specifically? I also really need the one where the hippos were. The next to the ruined town. Okay. Thanks. Other ruined town of the south. This one, the Scorched Ruins. Okay, I see it on the map. And I usually see that little icon, it looks like that is a mausoleum. Okay. And maybe I can find the other one more easily. I guess it's not left of the starting grace, it's left of uh, west of this guy. Thank you. friends over here must have seen these friends become enamored by them and missed the mausoleum before probably gonna like insta nuke this guy or whoever is in here since I was supposed to do it so long ago of solitude. Shield chest, knights in solitary jail. The armor set that covers the whole body and overlapping plates of steel. Interesting. Great Sword of Solitude, Solitary Moon Slash. They relinquish their hearts for heightened battle prowess. That's cool. Okay, so. I'm trying to remember where I fought those, uh. This guy's is a recluse river, I think. Going a different direction down recluse river. I don't see a map marker for this one though. Um, let me read Scarf's note. The east mausoleum is by the waterfalls in the recluse river downstream where you killed the hippos. That's where they were before. That looks familiar to me. Maybe the for 
it's down I can go, is it? This is the wrong way, because this takes me past this guy, which goes to a completely different section of the map than I want to be at. I might have to go up and turn around there. I'm surprised there's not a grace down in that region. Gravestones are dropping down, I see. Possibly more for dropping down over here. I think this is where I fought the hippos. Um for a mausoleum. Also okay to get more explicit instructions here since I've already been here a couple times and didn't see it on my first pass. Maybe directions relative to the Dark Light Catacombs Grace or the bridge leading to Village Grace would be nice. Down is almost certainly death there. waterfall that actually has something behind it, I'll be shocked. Maybe it's just not marked on the map. Pretty sure this is where he was talking about. Recluse River. I have Recluse River downstream. I have Recluse River upstream. Is there a upstream? Is it like up from there somewhere in those ruins? Oh, from downstream. Walk up to the edge of the cliff right next to the site of grace. I did the Eastern Nameless Mausoleum. Maybe there's two mausoleums that are called Nameless Mausoleums. Hold on. No, a Northern Nameless Mausoleum. Okay. So walk to the edge of the cliff right next to the site of Grace. There's stone steps that lead down the waterfall. Take the steps down while staying on the side before the waterfall. I see. I was looking at a second ago. I think this is what took me to a lobster earlier. I think you're way southeast, which would be post waterfall. No worries, thank you. Uh, another smaller waterfall just ahead. Yeah, so where was a second ago. Continue east to find the mausoleum at the edge of the third waterfall. Okay.
guess I don't have a map marker for this at all. Mm -hmm. I do like this river a lot with all the waterfalls. It's very pretty. I could have to go further down, I guess, because I don't see anything else. That right there is the last waterfall I see, and there's certainly no mausoleum there, right? Check one more time. I might just Google, if I know the name of the mausoleum, I might just Google to see the map location since I already have most of the map uncovered. Southeast of the ruins of Monte. I don't think it would be up there. East until you reach the end to find the mausoleum. Sounds like I need to keep following the tombstones down. Maybe that's what I'm missing. Tombstones here. My God, I really need to do like an anti your life plugin to remove all of the like video ads that are all over this thing. Try going down this way. Six hour VOD trying to find a mausoleum with a boss. I'm gonna one shot. Oh, shit. Yeah, I thought so. Okay, I'm gonna try this again. Careful going down these here. Flies just fell to their deaths. somewhere I'm watching a video of someone going to it it's like over here okay that's somewhere completely different well let me get my souls back in port and see if I can follow where they're going here thanks for putting them there game that's very kind of you Uh, no, what's a forge? I'm gonna point me to a couple of those, I'm okay with it. I'm going northwest. Oh, let me rest really quick so I can see what the hell I'm doing.
Okay, sure. Want to put me down later? That's fine with me. down these steps somehow. East eventually. Yeah, do you have an example of where one is? There it is, first try. Oh, those instructions were not correct, or maybe there's an alternate way to get there. Yeah, sure. Scadu Altus. It's like right when we get our Shadu Altus, right when we get up here, right? south from the high road cross this thing okay thanks do that after this Ben might be making a mess and go clean it up after this boss fight here. Shasta. Thought it would be fun to play with this weapon because I'm guessing not a lot of people play with it since you get it literally beating the main game, but I think it is kind of overpowered. I sort of regret it. Great katana. That's cool. Berserker's weapon used to endure enemy attacks and reply with one's full fury. Wielder's less likely to stagger from counterattacks, but takes increased damage. Weed cutter. That's cool. Increases damage delta foes, but greatly increases damage taken by the wielder. Interesting. Wonder what the numbers are on that. Uh, I have to go check on my cat's disaster. Give me a. This might be like five minutes or so. Last time he broke a wine bottle and took me forever to clean up. Yeah, it wasn't so bad. He just knocked over a ceramic mug, so I just had to clean up the shards so he wouldn't hurt himself. Okay. Uh, kitty's doing zoomies. Three ten. Let's see. Probably have to go kill some enemies to get some XP really quick. Some people's cats. I guess there'll be some enemies in this forge, presumably. Guess. We can do the guy outside the entrance here. That's probably worth a decent number of souls. Or I'll have to take an elevator. Annoying. Kill some guys up here while I wait. I ended up respecking out of mine, but then it made actually some sense to have some mines. So. Little assholes. Well, those guys are worth a ton of souls. I don't think they could have possibly, like, done 
curated numbers for the souls values for enemies because of the crazy like different sorts of scaling in different parts of the game but it does kind of feel all over the place and impossible to predict My understanding is every enemy has a base souls value that then like scales based on the the area that you're in has different there's like different stats that are favored or not favored or the areas are um just ascending in level according to whatever the damage and health scaling is there right It's this guy here. So much from the Morth ruins, man. I just never went there and never explored near there, apparently. I do forges in the uh, base game. It's not a dungeon type, I remember. Maybe it is. Is there one that had uh, like a bunch of lava at the bottom? Oh, they're new. Okay. Maybe I'm remembering the mausoleums actually having dungeons in them instead of just a boss fight. Okay. Let's see why I missed this. That's cool. Whoops. I didn't die, so. Ruined Forge of Starfall Past. That's cool. Yeah, I can see why you want me to check this out. Already feels pretty different. Well, I haven't seen these misbegotten guys, like, at all. Yo, how's it going, Scar? Piercing armaments overcome enemy shields. Build power, then lunge forward. I think they were generally pretty smart for the majority of the vanilla enemies. They were like, we're going to have this guy show up in like one or two areas because we have so many of them that we don't need to overuse them. We can make it a surprise when you run into the prawn guys with the pest threads. Because I like this dress, I'm probably not going to be able to use it for the final boss. We'll see, I guess. Um... I feel like there should be an exit for me. I'm missing. Okay, so these are kind of like mines in terms of what they provide. Lots of like ambient smithing stones. They really give you an insane number of smithing stones. I wish I was excited. Oh, there's a lever here. Thanks, message. I wish I was excited about that. Also, does not seem to care about my weapon at all. Ouch. It's 
attacks. I can stagger him eventually. Not able to get the reward though. What, if anything, they could do to make smithing stones more exciting. I think the specific pattern they have of having all these different, like, smithing stone two, three, four, five, makes it kind of hard to imagine in your mind, like, what your current stock is, whether you have enough to upgrade a weapon as far as you want it to go. I do think the weapon upgrade progression is kind of janky in Elden Ring compared to like classic Souls games because you could just go somewhere and get really high level stones early and then it just kind of becomes a weird question of can I find a level 5 stone that gets me from 4 to 6 because I had plenty of 6 and 7 and 8 and 9 and so on, right? Okay, I don't think you are worth fighting, sir. I think it's really hard to make a big open world like this and make you excited about all the loot. So it doesn't all have to be interesting. Love ahead. Ow. No, he's awake. Heavily resists my shit. So cute. Killed his pet, my monster. Bring him up. Ambush, I see. Oh, well, I might be dead. Smithing talisman. Yeah, exactly. Well, I first saw it, I'm like, oh, maybe they did the DLC so that there's like content for all different levels and folks were like, yeah, no, that's not true. That's really weird then. Yeah. I guess if it wasn't gated by Moog, that would make more sense if you could just come here immediately, but Moog is a pretty, he's not necessarily a super hard boss, but if you haven't played the game before and you're playing blind, it's by the time you get to Moog, you've probably done almost everything there is to do. Friend. I guess they wanted to make sure they gave you a plethora of stones so that you could effortlessly upgrade some of the new weapons that are available, which I suppose I'm not mad about. Lift ahead. Try stealth. That's cool. I don't believe you. funny you like trap yourself in here with them there's an alternate way to get into that room hit them where they're weakest
Okay, so we're back here with the guy whose pet I cruelly murdered. Is there like a boss at the end of this? That room is a dead end. I got an item. No, but there's a clear end. Okay. Do we think it's past that door I opened and closed? Lever said something about lift ahead. Let's see. Then where are their weakest? Assume they're talking about the scary golem guys. That's the ladder I just took. We don't want that. Precious item. Oh, that's cool. Oh. Oh. So they give you even more of the smithing stones. That's neat. Ancient meteoric ore, great sword. One of the treasures of the ruined forges. Ancient meteoric ore, ending in a sharp point. White light charge. That's cool. Arcane. Does that make sense? The arcane being tied to like the stars. Wow, I have a lot of I have a lot of these now. Pretty much set. Alright, I'm gonna go to the round table hold. I'm going to thanks for pointing me to that. That was interesting. It's a cool thing to have close it out to. Uh, I'm gonna upgrade my perfume. Let's see what other tools I have for upgrading here. That's neat. I need to also check some remembrances here. Spear of the Impaler. Scales with Faith. Huh. And it's fire damage. Maybe. Mesmer's Orb, Faith 60. Uh, don't remember. Yeah, that's what I was thinking, Spiky. Like, I'd rather there be... I'd rather they have multiply the number of fragments by like a hundred or a thousand or something. <laughs> that would be kind of cool, actually. Maybe give it to you with other loot. Uh, that card was dex 35, though. Zap the Great Beyond. Yeah, sure, where is it? Gross. Cow Tower's Resentment. Didn't read all these. Read that one. Strength, Dex, Faith. Holy, though, unfortunately. Maybe he was hitting me with holy damage the whole time. Forty-one. Okay, 
Hold on. This is the church. Sorry, if you asked that before, I didn't see it, sir, my bad. Oh, let me make it daytime. the cliffside for rafters. You mean these guys? They're like... Okay. Sometimes I hate torrent. <laughs> Talisman of all crucibles. Reduces damage taken from critical hits and headshots. Improves the effectiveness of rolling and backstepping. Increases damage taken. Huh. Improves the effectiveness of rolling and backstepping, I assume, means more iframes. Part of needing trying to get into the Goldilocks zone for boss fights is that I really like the experience of having to learn a boss's moveset, learn like when it's safe to dodge and when it's safe to punish and that sort of a thing. Um, and I like that uh, in Sekiro, basically every boss is that. You pretty much always need to learn the timing on when to parry, deflect and that sort of a thing. Do you think this DLC favors more toward because the enemies attack so much and don't let up, like just swinging in and hitting them and eating the damage and trying to find windows when it's safe to heal? Which is also fun, but I feel like I end up beating bosses without really knowing them, like I do with a lot of other bosses, like like Artorias, for example, from Dark Souls One. Damage penalty is huge. Let me see if the iframes on that thing that makes the back step better are any good. Seems like a really weird item. More iframes should could be good.
Ancient Ruins Grand Stairway. I really love that curtain effect. Trying to find the grand stairway there. Just... Oh. Got lucky with him shooting that tree, I guess. Hi, big guy. Time for revenge. Oh, it's another one of these guys. That's cool. And this is the one you're talking about. favorite bosses in the DLC. Just really creative. God, that's not the best thing to come out. Can you not spawn that of all things? Please don't. That is preferable, thank you.
Basilisk was a nice touch. Divine Beast Tornado. I feel that is an incantation. That's cool. <laughs> what an idea. Probably just gonna end up having these souls be worth it, but yeah, I don't want to farm. Okay, so the entire DLC has been leading me to believe the final boss is to be Mikola, but it can't be Mikola because. I don't think that's in character, right? The whole idea is that Mikola is like cast off his divinity and his flesh and everything. So I'm really interested to see what it's going to be. Burning more trees. Occurring motif. Okay, cool. So this is the thing in the distance that's been in shadow the whole time. We don't really see it clearly from these ruins. <laughs> oh, that's a cool dragon corpse over there. Short, oh great tree, oh great tree. Enir Elim. Oh, you're coming right in, aren't you? Yeah, you sure are. He's a variant on the omen guy that we saw earlier. Divine Bird Warrior Greaves. Yeah. 
First off, left. Oh, which way am I supposed to read this? I do like their fascination with these, like, divine cities. Fort Evening. Okay, now, now, now we're finally developing the joke of that one reading. No, no, I'm not complaining. I think it's cool. Wait, have I been able to come here this whole time? Oh my god. Did I get here like forever ago? Oh wow, it's like the mother of all... Holy shit, spiral level design. That's cool. I see. Nice. Really would be fun to see FromSoft collaborate with literally anyone. Like this is what we get with Gurm, right? You still kind of see the same ideas springing up, but with a twist on it from whatever creative scaffolding Gurm helped them develop. Like, collaborate with Stephen King. Do you still end up getting a divine city? expected these guys here. I was associating them with the Frenzy Flame. There's different versions of them. Time for gesturing. I don't have like a generic prayer gesture, do I? That's cool. Help sort. Oh, one of these guys before. Is there a gesture thing in that room I just left? The message is just not accurate. Flooding horn. Okay. Messages have generally been pretty helpful with helping me find secrets, but I know people are tricksy. I feel like the number of like fake messages, low effort messages, and troll messages has gone up as the series has gotten more popular, which I suppose isn't surprising. 
I also played Souls 1 and 2 like long after their initial popularity. That might have affected that. Yeah, like, there's a lot of like Fortnite Mr. Beast jokes just all over the game, and it's like, okay. They're not context sensitive. Like, it's funny when it's context sensitive, I think is the idea. It's funny if you say hidden path ahead when it actually looks like there should be a hidden path, but if you just put it on every wall, it's like, all right, guys. Jeff Goldblum doing here? This does not seem like a Jeff Goldblum town. Mr. Beast. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's so it's, it's just reads as very low effort. I think it's funny one time when you see it on Reddit or whatever. That's why I liked Fort Evening, because it's like, okay, someone's actually, like, doing a, a joke here. Praise the research. I actually find that one pretty funny. I don't know if I notice people using research to mean exploring areas that don't have anything in the base game. expecting an area I thought maybe it's gonna take me straight to a boss so it's cool that there is an area here after all more Elden Ring this VOD might end up going over six hours then which is it's okay it's just I prefer not to because I can edit them on YouTube if they're under six hours which has come up a couple times due to like copyright claims or whatever for a level up again, don't I? Kill some more guys first. Pop outside and kill a couple. Came in. Oh yeah, just talking about Mr. Beast. That goes back to the area with the lion.
how I first came in here. Okay, I must have just missed progress somewhere out there. I'll have to fight everything again. I can just run past it. I got my level up. here got down in here and it was dead end yeah don't go down is the key This is where I was supposed to be. This guy's pretty scary. Okay. Shit. He just punched me in the stomach while I was flying at his face? Wow. Damn, dude. tell whether I should try to uh, finish getting all of the shadow tree fragments before the final boss if the boss is like that hard or if that's going to make it I mean, well, not trivial but I don't want to be in a position where I'm losing due to math problem Sort of guy who was kicking my ass earlier. Whoop. Whoop. Got an extra new lease on life for a second there. Jesus! Stop it. Here are all my fears. Interesting. You're level 15. You're at 195% of your normal strength and could go up to 200. Okay, so they... The scaling is pretty kind then. Yeah, I guess looking for every last fragment would be annoying sense revenge ahead I guess they make this grace particularly tricky to get to because you have to go through two really hard enemies
Where the guy hitting me? thoughts about what they could do with shadow tree fragments i do agree and i was thinking about this earlier that multiplying them by like a hundred or a thousand and just spreading them all over the game in all sorts of places would increase the chance that you have enough right if you do a reasonable amount of exploration and killing enemies it would also make it more interesting to kill random shit enemies that don't matter uh, which I think is kind of a problem. I was talking about that with another crab's treasure, that they have the enemies with the pink eyes that you want to kill at least once to get the crystals off of them. Baby death bird, death right birds, they do a good job of being annoying. Within the capabilities of a mod, it's true. Yeah, I think them switching it to soft capping at 12 is smart. I just, I don't like the placement of the fragments. Um, it's so important compared to every other item and they don't really stand out. Like it rewards exploration in the like abstract. Like I said, I'm, I'm interested to see what they switch to, to be honest. I think there's some cool stuff they could do. or disappointment yeah i think if they did a thing where every time you found any kind of unique piece of loot it was paired with a fragment right so even if it's like you know greater potentates cookbook number 73 or something it gives you a, a little fragment that you can combine later that would feel kind of cool and then you would still be extra excited if for some reason you're doing a a greater potentate build where you actually like desperately want that shit Hotmancer, exactly. Let's see. An extra nasty version of the enemy that was the single enemy that was already causing me the most trouble in the game. That's a fucking attack. Jeez. I surround you constantly. Can you not, though? Shit, I missed. Okay, we're okay. Sorry, one sec, y'all. They are mean, mean. Shit. 
shadow tree fragment maybe i'll if i get to the boss door i might uh If I'm like close to another level up, I might try to get it really quick. Just try to find one that I may have missed. Use FP to continuously heal allies. Ah, more potent effect on a warming stone. I don't believe you. First off, strong foe, and then time for grace. Another one of these fuckers. First off, dashing through. Okay, I can do that and then come back and fight him. I don't have all my buffs. Wow. Seems like some of the nastiest enemies like in the whole game, almost. They're essentially mini-bosses. Dashing through is not so easy. Hey man, give me a sec here, just to take a quick nap. Do I have enough? I do, huzzah. me when I come from behind. That's nice. Oh, shit. That's a fucking cool attack. Wow. <laughs> Godfrey do something like that, I think. Calculated dodge there. One warrior's great sword. Beam for horn calling storm. Call a storm into the horns. Mow through enemies. The scale with faith doesn't have any holy, so I'll think about it.
First off, sadness. Oh, Leda. I've even gotten worried when a uh, NPC lets me into the zone and it seems to be my friend. desired all along the clashing of the favored laws such that one would prevail so be it if you insist upon facing Nicola the kind then I will run you through whoever you might be whoops Don't carry now oh oh do I need to summon to help this is their story really I thought he was dead. His cooperator will not arrive until the time is right. Well, you can do that not in the arena then. Just established you can. Hans box and help too. Okay. Challenge Needle Knight Leda and her allies. That's cool. Don't you dare approach Mikula the Kind. Needle Knight Letter, Dryleaf Dane, and our ally. No, Dryleaf Dane. Will never allow this. Who's their ally? Freya? She was saying she was looking forward to fighting. I could not hope for a worthier foe. This is our moment. Let's make it something to remember. That's cool. This is a pretty exciting sequence and kind of different from what they usually do with NPC fights. I'm into it. My allies are just going to show up partway through here. There we go. I am Ansbach of the Pure Blood Knights. I stand with Blade of Love, Blood of Fire, for the dignity of my Lord and Master, Moe. Righteous tarnished. It appears that our interests have aligned. I really like having a Moog servant who's not like a piece of shit. This is surprising. Now, my blade. Watch closely. Fortunately, I have the hyper armor stagger human opponent's abilities, so Peter's not very good at dodging it. Like my uh, dagger world. weapon. It's really interesting that Thilia shows up though. Huh. I thought he fucking hated me. I also thought he was like super dead. Hey, 420k souls, nice. It's really cool. Freya's great sword. Too bad, I really liked Freya. Oh, now I have the handwork and the footwork. That's cool. So you can like dual wield it. Or is this kind of the same thing? It's just focusing on feet instead of punches. Oh, I didn't see the like bloody scar on the face, that's cool. The Scarlet was once hewn in the center of her face. Nicola put his lips to it and the unfading scar became the compass that Freya would thereafter follow. Hmm. This is the power of red main battle skills. Deals holy damage, Welp. <laughs> Maybe the next DLC will be, uh, if they do another DLC, it's all going to be Godwin. So it's going to be all death. Everything is weak to holy. We apologize for making a game where everything is strong to holy for lore reasons. Time for sadness, yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I think so. I've had a couple fights where having Holy definitely. I, th I think the Putressa Knight I would have been stuck on for a really long time at that uh, that level that I was at when I fought it. If it didn't take me like five hits to kill him. Mesmer was weak to Holy too. Sure. This is going to make a huge difference. Leda's armor. Why is it always despair? Leda's armor does look cool. Oh, strengthens attacks following a dodge roller backstep as well as dash attacks. Interesting. Love all the cool, unique stats on armor. Don't you dare, don't give up. Oh, hey, what's up, Hansbach? How you doing? Righteous tarnished. That was an astounding battle, to be sure. Now I suppose this leaves only one, but in truth I cannot calm my quivering. Challenging a god is no small matter. Ask about the Olie. I'm afraid I underestimated the lad. Appearing frail in both body and mind, I presumed it'd be like to stumble upon the field of battle. What a fool I was. He serves another master, but Satyolier performed magnificently. Perhaps he too quivers with anticipation, <laughs> as do we. Quivers with Antissa. Oh. Something you want to get off your chest? Yeah, I killed no, Moog, sorry. Worry. It was you, wasn't it? Who defeated Lord Moog. Uh, fear not. I bear no grudge against you. His eminence was felled in an honorable duel. And such are the risks of seeking lordship. Besides, what right have I to complain? I blame the enchantment more than anything. Righteous tarnished. We will have our victory. I swear upon my blood. Righteous tarn. I swear upon my blood. Cool. I like that you can be upright with him about Moog. Yeah, that's cool. I like that. All right, so this looks like final boss door. What the fuck is it going to be? I have no idea. Like, they mentioned bringing Moog's body up here, so maybe we fight Moog? That feels strange, though. Um, Guessing if he resists holy, he probably does a holy. Where is it? Lord's Divine Fortification. Alright, so I know I shouldn't be using this weapon, but I just want to fight with the weapon I'm used to, and then I can make some changes. Another ulcerated tree spirit. <laughs> Loyal blade, 
and champion of the festival. Both your deeds the festival. will ever be praised in song. Now, the vow will be honored, and my lord brother's soul will return. So that he may no be kidding. my consort. That's cool. <laughs> In his prime, essentially. Wow, that's that's like really unexpected and really cool. I like it. So Moog really wanted to be the consort, but Nikola is a dick and wanted it to be Radon. Pretty fucking scary. Because the one we fought in the base game was uh, like super weakened by. He's probably weak against Rod. I would say I hope he is. It's a cool attack. Jesus! Okay, we're not stopping the always attacking you pattern here. He is weak to rot. I think that was enough to equip him. Well, so begins. Promised Consort Radon. That's cool. Oh, it's in Mo. See, I was wondering, like, what, what was the whole deal about Moog's body being taken upstairs? That's kind of fucked up. Poor Moog. Nicola's like, nah, I don't, I don't fuck with this guy. The guy I do fuck with. Surprise, there aren't a bunch of dipshits on the internet complaining that the final boss is woke. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna dodge that right away, I guess. I need to find out if he's actually weak to rot. Yeah. Which makes sense. To be fair. But yes, he can be routed. I just have to make sure I hit him with all the attacks there. Whoa! That's a fucking rude attack. Jeez. How much is my big thing to hit for? Oh, that's actually not too bad. I'm gonna kill to make that work. Um, let me try a couple of my other things here, though. Let's see how much healing comes off of the fire sword. Probably also need to take off this cool dancer armor it's for the extra stats. Be as close to my medium roll as possible. Well, now I'm heavy load. Brutal. This blasphemous blade is really heavy. Um, let's see if I want to mess around with that at all. Any portion of his damage physical? It looks like he's doing a lot of gravity rather than holy, but maybe that changes. Sword swings are physical. Okay. Not 
don't know. Oh, it is. Okay. That's okay. It comes out faster than my old swing. I can do it from a safer distance. Stamina problem here, I think. I might respect some of my faith points into uh, endurance. I'm not like as captain that. Oh shit, what's this? We gotta see Mikola. Extra arm. And my promised consort, Radan. Looks awesome. It looks like a cape, essentially. Dude cape. Twink cape. Oh god, that seems bad. Get that off in time. His rod wears off in phase two, which makes sense. Consort of Nicola. Alright, well, I think the Blasphemous Blade is the way to go. Um, I'm trying to think of anything else I want to change. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. Uh, let's see. Do you have a fragment sitting around? Confirm that I need two and not three. It's probably fine. Still three. Um. Don't bother with Scarlet Aonia until the phase transition. Well, it might end up being similar to um. Uh, Mesmer, where because it wears off in the phase transition, it's not worth the time it takes to activate it. We'll see. Yeah. I like the Twin Princes a lot. attack timing like that one. There's some delays in the spins. I can try to delay rolling. Should go ahead and use the wondrous physic guard those. Let's 
Big attack the end. Quick second to hit him at the end of that. Uh oh. I'm having a bad day. Yeah. <laughs> Relentless. That attack is so mean. The fact that this sword has healing on it means it probably is going to be the way to go. I don't know that I'm going to need four Cerulean Tears. Three is probably enough, even with healing before I go in. I'm not, like, dying with zero flasks, so maybe I should just ignore it until that happens. Avoidance is really helpful, but I feel like I need to save it for when I do Scarlet Aonia. Oops. Well, wasted it there. That's fine. Full heal from the L2, though. That's cool. The big problem with this thing is it doesn't have the hyper armor that my hammer had. like take extra damage from rot does he i feel like i got his health down way faster last time by starting with the rot i only hit him like a few times with the big sword so he does chill out a bit more so he starts marching toward me slowly face transition This thing helps a lot, it seems like. The Holy Resist Miracle is really good for this fight, it seems like. No surprise. Okay. Maybe I should try the butterflies then? I think they come out faster. The problem I was having with it... Well, there is, there is some hyper armor on Scarlet Aonia. I don't think there's any on butterflies, but I'll try it really quick just to see. I'll just go in and try to hit him with it and see what happens. Ignoring buffs, I'm just testing. Not enough. Oh, okay. I think I want to save the Wondrous Physic for Phase 2 so I can try to rob him. Attack is relatively easy to avoid. Yeah, I need to not panic dodge in case he pulls me, and I have to wait like a second. To try to learn that timing better. It's cool. I get the heal even if the fire hits him and not the blade. I wasn't sure about. Still guessing. 
Let's actually see him perfect, because I think he does it at the beginning of the phase change every time. Yow, that's a fucking attack. Good god, what the fuck? Jesus, dude, chill. Chill all the way out, please. Probably gonna need more flasks here. Just have no stamina ever, so I might need to use like a turtle stamina things. Uh oh. <laughs> You're an asshole, you know that? A funny asshole, but an asshole. I think if I had gotten that last L2 off, I might have been a chance with Rot. Flying the Rot definitely makes a difference, though. One, I think it's probably worth using. You know, how much damage I take at the beginning here. I end up being under him for a chunk of that, which is helpful. Okay, time to dodge better that time. I'm going to keep hitting me. I didn't realize I had multiple hits. his blade there again. That was great. <laughs> Good interrupt. Okay. Oh, he doesn't always do the big holy explosion at the start of the phase. It's unfortunate. Yeah, I think that holy resist miracle is doing a lot of work for me in phase two. I definitely want him to because Scarlet Aonia can get under him during that. That sucks. I feel like I might just need to like do attempts until he doesn't knock me out of Scarlet Aonia at the beginning because it's like too good and not have damage wise. Saves me so many resources long term. It's always moving forward almost exactly at the pace I'm dodging, which makes it pretty tricky. A little salty about that run where I had one more L2 to press, but he happened to land his big swords in my head at the last second. It's okay. I don't think that was like the stars lion attempt. I tried to stay far enough away from him to force him to do the thing. fire can hit him when he's in the air like that. Maybe not. Oh, I'm not a fan of Careful about switching that out. The holy resist is very noticeable.
Don't do the annoying gravity attack. That one's fine because he swings over my head on that one. break for stamina reaching in this fight. <laughs> I get a little bit of stamina every time I uh, use my freaking potion, which is funny. Uh, I thought I was going to get a phase transition there. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Good try. Yeah, I'm considering stamina region. I don't know what I'd swap for it, though. Could maybe... I think this is like a 10% increase to damage on my L2. Oh, that's a bummer, so I'm not fighting the real boss. Uh, let's see. Da -da -da -da. Look at item crafting, see how many of these I can make. A lot, actually. Oh no, three. <laughs> Those are different numbers. Three versus a lot. Yeah, I think the armor is maybe helping me to be able to just stand there and eat attacks, though. Um... I'll try to roll with it for now. I had an attempt that was pretty successful. I think if I had been able to roll out of the way of one attack and do an L2, I would have had it. But it is kind of funny that I'm just like stamina starved the whole time. You're not gonna do your thing? You always do your thing. That's what I thought. It's your thing. It's the thing that you could do. Oh, he didn't do the usual follow-up there. Interesting. Maybe that's based on my distance from him after he pulls me in. Yeah. Almost doable, like, 20 minutes ago. Secondary hits from that are relatively absorbable. They do knock me down though, which kind of sucks. Just delaying that longer and longer every time now. Well, <laughs> there's a certain angle you can have that's very bad for me trying to get that cast off.
and walk for a second, huh, buddy? Can you do that more? Can I prompt you to do that some more? This is a really cool concept for the final boss. I've said that a couple times, but it's still true. Phase transition force? Yeah. I guess he hit me right when it happened, though. No, he didn't. Nice. Ouch. Do your big go in the sky shit, asshole. Come on. Thought he was about to do it. I guess not. All the way down, sir. Okay. That's a baby dodgeball. Time to buff when he does that, it's hard to say. Come on. Whew. Remembrance of a god and a lord. Nice. Concert of Mikola, he entered the Shadow Tree. All of its names it can be unlocked by the Finger Reader. It can be used to grant a great bounty of runes. Mikola saw in Radon a lord. His strength and his kindness that stood in dark contrast, stark contrast with their afflicted selves. Mikola made his heartfelt wish that Radon would one day be his king consort. And he stomped on everyone in order to make that happen. Wow. Really cool fight. I do feel I was probably supposed to have a much harder time with that fight than I did, but I think getting a Goldilocks fight is really hard, and it's extra hard in Elden Ring. <laughs> My only prayer is that their next uh, open world game kind of is structured more like Sekiro in terms of the progression system. That probably makes it like wildly less uh, accessible, which is definitely a problem. Let us go together. This was like at least in alphabetical order or something. Dress back on in case I show up at all in the cutscene at the end. But you get that gesture if you get grabbed by Mikola twice. Yeah, I had a bliss. Those who build poison in secret, scorned and loathed. Silver hair is arranged in the same style as St. Trina's. Unique weapons sleep evermore. Intelligence. Oh, that's cool. You hit them while they're sleeping, it does a bunch of damage. First time it puts a charm on you and does no damage. The second time you get a heart stolen message and die. That's pretty cool. Ah, uh, but you can... So, Mikola's Great Rune is like a reusable tool. I didn't realize that. That's interesting. 
Those are really cool boss. Oh, poor guy. Furious Blade of Onsbuck. Hmm. Dynastic Sickle Play. This would have been fun to switch to if I was still on the Arcane build. Yeah, exactly. No one gets to have a happy ending. I think I'm cool with it. I think it's like consistent with the setting that like all these people are already they're they're living past they're everybody's walking dead, right? Like I feel like that's like a theme in all of these games that their lives are already over, everything that's important has already happened, right? Um it's like there's a little golden thing in the center here to interact with. Touch memory. Did anybody see this coming? Like, even among, like, the super lore nerds? It's such a cool idea. <laughs> I'll make the world a gentler place. It's one of those things where, like, it doesn't feel like they did it because it would be surprising. It, it, it fits in the lore we've learned so far. Um, circlet of Light. Boost intelligence, faith, and arcane while boosting the power of Mikola's light. Interesting. The faith boost is probably worth it. But I can't. I have to use this ridiculous head. So I do, do I get credits in the DLC or no? I guess it would, wouldn't be because you might do this partway through the game and then continue to the ending. All right, I will give my final thoughts then. Um, I had a absolute blast with this DLC. Uh, I, I always get pre-sad the instant I start playing a Souls game because I'm like already sad that it's gonna be over, but then I like try to exist in the moment and enjoy it as much as I can. Uh, everything about it was really, really good. I think the, the world was really impressive. It felt huge, it is huge. Like I said earlier, I think that they could just, if they're gonna make open world games, if they want to make games that are about this size, I think this is fine, really. Um, it doesn't need to be as big as the base game and might even be better for being like about this size. There's a lot of stuff to do. There's a lot of things to find. It feels really rewarding to explore through. All of the areas feel extremely distinct from one another. Um, I'm, I'm going to remember a lot of these zones, right? The art direction is fantastic. Uh, there's a bunch of zones that they just look like concept art when you load it and then you walk around and you're like, oh my god, this is actually 3D rendered and I can like walk up to all of this. It's absolutely gorgeous. The they're, They've gotten really good with their colors. If you look back at Dark Souls 1, which is mostly brown and gunk and shit, uh, this game is beautiful. Even when they're using like, you know, puke green and like, like sour yellow, it looks really, really good. Um, that really stuck out to me, just how pretty this game is and how pretty FromSoft games have become. Uh, the boss design, all of the new bosses were really fun to fight. Um, I maybe am a little puzzled as to why they've transitioned to having the bosses always be, like, getting more and more and more aggressive and never letting up. Um, I, I suppose my, what I believe in my heart is that they just expect you to use the spirit ashes that they gave you, 
because that's a core game mechanic. So of course you're using them, right? So they did all their testing with the spirit ashes. And so it makes sense to have a boss that's just like never letting up if, you know, 25% of the time it's attacking your little ally. Um, so that, that would make a little bit more sense to me. I do kind of long for the more attack, attack, dodge, dodge, you know, punish uh, way of playing. I think that Bloodborne was a really good balance of, for me of a game that was heavily, um, uh, it very much favored an aggressive play style, right? Um, but it didn't feel like the bosses were just never letting up on you. Like you, you had the regain mechanic where you were rewarded for punishing and attacking through enemy attacks sometimes. I thought that was really good. Sekiro, I think, is probably mechanically their best game. Um, it feels amazing to get good at Sekiro, and it feels amazing to beat the game and go fight the first boss again and, like, stomp him because you just, you, you know the game, you feel the game now. Uh, I feel like if they wanted to do something like Sekiro again, they would have to be as restrictive as Sekiro is with the leveling system, though, i.e. basically not having a leveling system. Um, and I think that that should be something that they do sometimes. I'd love to see them do another game that's structured like Sekiro, but I don't think they should do that all the time because I think having this more accessible game that has this big web of ways you can level up and improve your character uh, is really cool. You think it's a natural consequence of the desire for harder fights. They have to crank some dials up. You get more health, longer combos, less downtime. Otherwise, people beat them like they always did. Yeah, that's true. Um, I, I do think there is a problem. So I was talking about this with a real-life friend about Cobalt Core, the, uh, the Slay the Spire-like game, that, like, once you've played Slay the Spire and you see the Matrix and you understand how a roguelike deck builder works you can't get the feeling of playing your first one back ever again because you're now like your, your baseline skill is now so much higher that anytime you play a similar game it's going to seem easy to you you're not going to get wrecked you know a hundred times in a row or whatever um and i think there's something similar going on with souls games like there are there are definitely transferable skills between them um and you're not going to get that experience from your first game where you really like felt like you were persevering and, and winning against insurmountable odds all the time sometimes you're like oh i'll just i'll just stand here and face tank his attack and make sure i get my flask of crimson tears off and i'll try the boss like 20 times until that happens to work right like that feels significantly less satisfying than that initial feeling of playing dark souls one i do think when they make a new game that has slightly different rules like they did with bloodborne and then with sekiro and then come back into elden ring um it does break your understanding a bit a lot of bloodborne is like trying to teach you to unlearn the way you played dark souls right and Sekiro is unlearning everything. Um, so I think they still have room to change stuff. But I don't know. I, I, I like the rhythm of the like pseudo turn-based Dark Souls boss where it's still really dangerous. It really fucks you up. Like I, I like the illusion of you going into the fight thinking that the fight is impossible because the boss is so awful and like aggressive. And then realizing, actually, no, there are these gaps that I can come in and get a hit off. Um, I can play careful, I can dodge for all the attacks. That feels really good to me. This was my first time really playing a build that was a trading damage build where I'm just gonna go in with hyper armor, hit him, take a hit, and then heal. And I don't think I enjoyed it as much as dodging through attacks. Um, it definitely felt like I was just hoping for a run where the boss had a pattern where I could get away with what I was doing as opposed to fighting it enough times that I eventually learned, ah, I can dodge, 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 time, wait, punch, and so on, right? Um, it's not necessarily like a, like a critical flaw or anything, but it is something that I'm, I'm interested to see where they go now that they've done a DLC that has a ton of just nonstop aggressive bosses, right? It's very different than anything they've done to this point, I think, other than maybe Millennia. Um, so I was talking about the bosses. So the boss design, regardless of like how aggressive they are, like they feel amazing to fight. Uh, they have really cool attack patterns. Like, uh, the one thing this game makes me worried about, I'm very worried about FromSoft. I'm worried that their devs are working too hard and that they might be working, like, really, really long hours and doing a shitload of crunch. Because I know it took a long time for this to come out, but this is basically a full game, right? It's smaller in scope than the original Elden Ring, but, like, that this came out as fast as it did with the insane number of new, unique pieces of content in it, blows my mind and makes me hope that they're working regular hours and not like working themselves to death to make these games um i would rather they make something smaller if they can uh <laughs> if they can work a little bit less so as far as my uh criticisms um i've already talked about this a lot during the playthrough but i think the shadow tree fragment concept is a smart one but one that needs work and i i get the sense that they're trying something that this is like they, they've done this before where they like 
experiment with a concept in a game or in a DLC for a game, and then it's kind of more of the core mechanic in the next game, right? Um, it the thing that that kind of uh, rubs me the wrong way about it is that you know I, I had this two hour grueling experience with Midra where I'm just I'm coming close and I'm dying and I'm dying and every time I die I'm like that was definitely my fault you know I didn't dodge that attack I didn't time that properly um, and it it feels like dying when you don't have enough vigor right where you just well if I go out and fight some dudes for a little bit and get a little bit of extra health I won't get one shot anymore but it's like right outside of the the realm where you know that it's a health problem. You can't really tell like, is this a stats problem or is this a skill problem? And to me, the Goldilocks zone is like having your stats at just the right level where a boss is like a 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 to two hour or 120 minute struggle, right? Um, and you're, you're fighting and when you finally win it really, you get that like sigh of relief and that like uh, sudden rush of joy that you finally beat it after all that work. You don't feel like you're frustrated. And I think Elden Ring, of all of the Souls games, probably struggles the most with getting you in that Goldilocks zone. You're very likely, due to the structure of the game, to end up beating your head against a boss that you can technically beat, but you're not really intended to be able to beat. And I, I personally dislike being on the other side even more. Like, I would rather beat my head against a boss that's kicking my ass for two hours or five hours in the case of Millennia. Like, as miserable as that is, I would rather be doing that than walking into a boss arena and just stomping them. <laughs> and not like having to to fight them for real um so i do i kind of regret the america's hammer decision i thought it would be a, a cool different thing for me to do i definitely don't do hyper armor i definitely don't do big hits i definitely don't do trading damage um but for me it felt a little bit less fun it, it felt like i was cheesing a lot of the content um but i guess that just you know comes with the territory of making a game that has so many different play styles and so many different ways to engage with the content um but as, as far as the shadow tree fragments go I think there's a lot of ways they could tweak the system to make it better. Um, I would almost prefer a progression system that is based almost solely on those fragments. Um, I don't know that actually gathering souls to level up is as important as that. Maybe if they found some other way, like a Sekiro-style way to gather experience points that you can use to unlock weapon skills or something would be nice. Replay the DLC on the Malnati, right? Maybe. I don't know. Um, like, it feels really good to get progression rewards from exploring the environment. It feels really fun to go into a random bullshit cave, and at the bottom of the cave there's a shadow, shadow tree fragment. That's awesome. The problem is there's this... I, I think I, it was up until I got to Midra, I was in the Goldilocks zone on most of the bosses. I was maybe a little bit past it. I had a couple bosses that were probably easier than they should have been, like the putrescent knight, right? Uh, but then I hit Midra, and it's like a, a brick wall. I'm like, oh my god, this is not like anything I've encountered so far. I don't think this boss's routine is actually that difficult to avoid. I'm just taking too much damage, right? I, I cannot seem to fight it. And so I go out and say, well, I'm just going to get as many Shadow Tree Fragments as I can before I fight Midra or Mesmer. And then I went, I went back, and I fought Midra, and he died in one hit, right? And I fought Mesmer, and it was not really a problem at all. Um... So I, I don't know how they can correct for that. My, my thoughts are increase the number of fragments by a factor of like 100 or 1,000, put them literally everywhere, all over the game, give you rewards for doing everything. Um, I would love if they had some kind of like effective blessing cap system where it's like, okay, you know, you're fighting Midra and we balanced Midra assuming that you're Shadow Blessing level nine. So when you come in to fight Midra, when you enter the arena, your Shadow Blessing drops from 12 to nine or something, right? I think that kind of leveling down, level capping effect is broadly pretty fair. And you could probably add some stuff in game to mitigate it. You could probably add like a, like a ring or a talisman or something that, you know, uh, blurs that out a little bit where you can have a slightly higher blessing than you're supposed to on a given boss. And it would be nice if the game found some way. I know that like being kind of deliberately obtuse and obfuscated is the way that they design stuff on purpose, so they can't do this for free. If they were to change it, it would be a fairly significant trade-off. But I think they could convey what level they intend you to have for content in the game in general. This is more of a critique of Elden Ring as a whole, not necessarily just the DLC. But like I was saying earlier, it's frustrating going to like Kalid or something, and Kalid is considered to be a level 17 area, even though the enemies don't feel that much more difficult. They drop way more souls. There's all these like really high level smithing stones and stuff. And the smithing stones are really your only clue that you're in what they think is a high level area, right? 
I think if they had some kind of more aggressive level capping system that brought your stats down in certain zones, they could do it diegetically. They could have a reason for why your power is limited in certain areas or in certain boss arenas. I don't think it would need pop-ups with text. It wouldn't need tutorials. You could just have a little lock on your health bar or something that shows you how much of it's not available to you right now, and you can kind of viscerally see that lock move depending on where you go. They've already done that in Dark Souls 2 with the uh, mechanic that makes your max health go down. They've done it in Dark Souls 3 with embers that make your max health go up, right? I don't think it's um, completely out of the question for, their, for them to pull something like that off. Um, but I, it, it, all, it makes me really interested to see where they're going to go, because I feel like this is their first swing at an idea that they have. And I'm sure they've collected a lot of feedback from this game um, and even from their own development and testing of this game. So I want to see what they do next. Uh, I, I am not holding my breath for a second Elden Ring DLC as much as I'd love to do Godwin. It took them so long to make this one. I feel like they're feeling like they're spent and are going to want to move on. Uh, I don't know if they're going to do an Elden Ring 2. Um, I kind of want them to just make another regular Souls game next rather than a big open world experience. I really hope they don't have that like uh, unsustainable growth thing of we keep have to making the game bigger and bigger and bigger. And I think that a lot of the fan base would probably agree with them on that point. Um, but I guess we'll see what they come to. But I, I, I hope that their Shadow Tree Fragment, their next concept for it is um, is different. It's not the exact same thing again because I think they have a lot of ways that they could toy with it to make it more interesting. Uh, but in short, this game was great. Uh, it was really, really fun. Uh, beautiful art, really memorable areas. Climbing the Jagged Peak is going to stick with me forever. Just They did a really good job of the pacing on that. Um, and they really did a good job pacing of lots of things. Like the, Even though it was kind of not a big deal, like this whole section, they managed to make it much creepier than it actually was, which I think that games are about illusion like that when you come in and you read all the messages about being watched like it essentially degenerates to a short sneaking sequence that you can basically just run away from and run to the the grace and be fine but when you don't know that it feels way creepier than it actually is they did a really good job with tone there um so FromSoft hasn't lost it and i'm excited to see what they put out next thanks everyone for watching this has been a blast